Praise the Lord for this opportunity to share with you the living word of God. And I pray that you pray for me that this lesson will be great and the rest of my program. And when you see me start praying, I need your prayer. It's me standing in the need of prayer. Now, I want to talk about Satan one more time. I don't want to get overboard with Satan because I see there's two sides to this story. Some don't do anything and some get off in it too deep. And both is wrong. Both are wrong. All right, let's talk about Satan's power. The devil titles, abilities, and sphere of influence are clearly defined in the tabernacle and the temple. Jerusalem, in Ezekiel 28 and 14, he is called the anointed cherub. He is an anointed cherub. I don't know why God put anointed on there because cherubins walked, worked around God with his anointing, and they were there to praise him and worship and, and sing to him. And Satan, Lucifer, i put it like this, Lucifer was the first creature that God ever created and the most powerful creature God ever created. Remember when he wanted Moses' body and Michael, the archangel, was there? And he said, I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. That's the way he had to approach Satan because he was that powerful. The cherubim was in the most holy place of worship during the Old Testament days. Two golden winged cherubims formed a part of the mercy seat, a covering of the holy ark of the covenant, which was a symbol of Israel's holiest devotions to Jehovah. Now, Jehovah is the Greek for Yahweh. The anointed cherub had to do with the very holiness of God, the very holiness of God. So they was around the power of God because the holiness of God is his completion. Yes, he's grace. Yes, he's faith. Yes, he's all of that. But holiness is the supreme thing with God. Now, when we took on the nature of Jesus, we are shared in that holiness. But this is what I want to explain to you also, that we are one-third saved. Two-thirds of us are not saved, and that's when you see Christians just like normal people because they're not saved in the soul or in their bodies. See, your nature, when you see Christians cutting up, sinning, and all of that, that's coming out of the nature of their body, the lower nature, that when Adam sinned, all of us became sinners with him because we were in him at that time. Our sperms were in Adam at that time. So when you see a Christian sin, you don't necessarily have to cast a demon out of him. That's just his lower nature, and that's what he's functioning. Satan was beautiful. He was perhaps the most gorgeous creature of all. His form was covered with gold and the most costly of stones. Ezekiel wrote that in perfect in beauty. Verse 12, melody and music. This is something important because even now when Whitney Houston, I think that was her name, when she went with Davis, I, I know his last name, Davis, when she went with him, he took her to a whole new level. So he has a demon in him. Uh, the guy with Motown, he got his people on drugs to control and dominate them. So this music business we in or the world is in is very demonic. Okay, Satan, melody and music. Satan was evidently the first created being. The deception Description in Ezekiel 28 and 13 includes a reference to musical instruments, tabrets, and pipes, indicating that he had the ability to create lovely music. Some believe that before the fall, he led musical praise to God. Certainly, the devil today makes tremendous use of music. Of course he do. Homosexuality and all those things came through music. Remember back in the disco age? That's when you heard, that's when homosexuality got carried away, and it became real big, real big. Okay, from an angel to a devil. Now, 
That's what he was. They, that's what he was. He was a cherubim. A cherubim got four faces: the face of a man, the face of an ox, the face of an eagle, and so on and so forth. So some people said two-faced it. Satan is four-faced it because any way he go, he's walking straight because he four faces. That's the four winds: like east, west, south, and north. He's it doesn't matter. He, they, they don't have to turn to go anywhere. Satan fell first because of pride over his personal beauty, Ezekiel 28 and 17. His greed and lust for physical and material things supplicated his spiritual service to Jehovah. And as I told you, Jehovah is the Greek of Yahweh. Y-A-W-A-H. He is spoken of as having a multitude of iniquities that led him to the full of violence. Perhaps this is the reference to his seeking after all things with no regard for whom he hurts in the quest. These elements, pride and greed, greed excuse me, have been major tools in tempting man to sin ever since. How many of us commit sins out of pride, of possession of pride, of physical beauty? And these could be produce iniquity in the cherub that cover it. How easily will they produce iniquity in sinful flesh like ours? That is the temptation of man. That is man's weakness. Pride is man's weakness. This is what kept us or prevent us from being what we ought to be. Satan is still a dignitary. In the book of Jude, we read that the archangel Michael, an angel of great power and position in heaven, did not presume to pronounce a re Revive judgment upon him, Satan. Verse 9. When he disputed, when the dispute over Moses' body, even in his fallen state, the devil, one of the most intelligent and keepest personality created by God. Because he didn't lose anything. He is still anointed. Some people go to church and they feel the anointing. Okay, that could be Satan. You you just don't know because he still has that ability. God didn't repent. When God called you and when God called me, he did not repent. Now, I know people tell you you're going to hell. No, you're not. No, you're not. Don't believe that. Just stay with God. Stay with God. Lucifer, the devil, is a real person. Lucifer, the devil, is a real person. The devil is not an influence or an idea or uh, some abstract design. He is a person, a personal name, and titles had given to him in Revelation 20 and 2. Personal acts and attributes are described to him in Isaiah 14, 12 through 15. Jesus dealt with the devil as a person, Matthew 4, 1 through 11, and waged war against him as against a person, Luke 13, 16. Paul, in his epistle, described the believer's uh, battle with Satan as with a real person, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. The devil is spoken of as a possessing personal characters, heart, pride, speech, knowledge, power, desire, and lust. Now, this is Satan. He's a person. You don't give, when you give your animals a name, you make making a personal out of them. They have souls but they don't have a spirit like ours. Our spirit was created in the image and likeness of the almighty God. Mm -hmm. That's the reason Satan comes after you the way he do, because as long as he got control over you, God can't come into this spear. Until Israel became a nation, the life was going on. Now, people didn't know that because even in Paul's day, he said he was waiting on Jesus to come back. Peter was waiting on Jesus to come back. John and all those guys were waiting on Jesus to come back. But he couldn't come back until Israel was made a nation. Because if Israel was never made a nation, then the devil could point and say, God ain't real. The only reason we know God is real, the Jews are still in the promised land. That's the reason we know God is real. 
Okay, what are demons? Okay, I want to skip this part. Demons are ageless. That means they don't age. Demons are the angels when they went in with women and had children. Those are demons. And what happened in the flood, they drowned. But their souls and bodies are still here on this earth. And they are the ones who want to get into people. And those are the creatures that Jesus was casting out of mankind at that time. So we, we see what happened there. And when Jesus said, in the name of Jesus, come out. At one part, uh, I think it was in the book of Matthew, they said, don't send us to the abyss. Now, what is the abyss? That is Tartarus. Don't send us there. Let us go into the hogs. And even a hog got enough sense to know that he don't want the devil inside of him. So the hogs ran and jumped into the, the sea and drowned themselves. And as you know, a hog will cut his throat when he's trying to swim. So he didn't want to live. From the Bible, we understand that large numbers of demons roam the earth and the air. Since they do not die, they have been in the world since the beginning of time. Demons are personalities. These demons are personalities without bodies, and they are highly organized as fallen spirits. They desire to dwell in a body in order to manifest themselves. They are angry with God because of their fallen state. Their prime motive is to destroy what God loves or creates, chiefly mankind. And that is the highest order. Those are the people that God created in his image and in his likeness. He did not cre create angels to be like that. He created mankind to be like that. In our travels, we have heard of demon spirits who claim to have been Napoleon, Alexander the Great, and other world leaders. They often state the names of people they have lived in previously. When someone who is possessed of a devil dies, the spirit immediately seeks to dwell in a place other than that person. He cannot walk into just any person's life. He must find one with an open door. He is a spirit of lust. He seeks a lustful person. He is a spirit of anger. He seeks and to possess a person who is a little control over his, temp his temper. A spirit of insanity will seek to enter a person's mind. <clears throat> and let me say this about the mind. That's where he comes with all of us, the mind. Because if he can get you to do something in your mind, he no longer needs your spirit. See, when you say a person is possessed, that means that the demon is in their spirits. Well, when a person gets saved, the demon can no longer live and can go into the spirit. Because the Bible tells us our spirits are sealed by the Holy Spirit until, get that word, until, redemption. You have not been redeemed yet. You are not in heaven yet. You are not walking holy yet. But you're on the road to all of these things. But he cannot possess us, a person who have been born again. Cannot. Because the Holy Spirit, when the minute you're born again, seals your spirit. You're good to go until the Lord come back and redeem your soul and your body. Because they are not saved yet. But I didn't mention your spirit because your spirit is already there. Your spirit is perfect already. Your spirit is holy already. Your spirit is ready for heaven right now. That's the reason when Christians die, they go to heaven. In the Old Testament, they couldn't do that. They had to go into Abraham's bosom. And where was Abraham's bosom? Abraham's bosom was in hell. And that's the reason when you read the Old Testament, they say, well, are you still in the land of living? Because where they was going was worse than the planet. That's when God gave them ways to stay, uh, keep a long life. He said, long life would I satisfy you. That was a promise to the Jewish people, not to us, because we can eat anything. That means if you're eating pork chops <laughs> and, and uh, shellfish and all that, you're getting too much cholesterol in your body, and that can kill you. Amen. Paul warned of demon powers. That demons are highly organized can be seen from the conclusion 
concluding pages of the Apostle Paul letter to the Ephesians. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weaknesses in high places. And they can find that in Ephesians 6 and 12. In the high places, Satan and his demon angels have their abode and base of operation. Jesus cast out demons, and that's what we're supposed to do. In Mark 16 and 16, he said, Go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature, all creation, and give them power to cast out demons. Before he said, Speak in tongues, he said, Cast out demons. So that's a priority. And you can't cast out demons till you speak it with other tongues. Now, that is the limit because when you're born again, you have the authority. When you get filled with the Holy Spirit, then you have the power to do these things. Jesus cast out demons. Jesus took for granted the existence of demons. He dealt with the, them constantly, casting them out of the people in Matthew 15, 22 through 28 and given his disciples the power to set people free, Matthew 10 and 1, Luke 9 and 1, Mark 16 and 17. This is what Jesus gave to us to carry out his mission because in the Old Testament they killed folks. Why did they kill them? Because they didn't have the power to cast them out because Satan would take you to another level. You think people are bad now? Okay, you just wait and see what devil can do all right let's go on the apostle believed in the assistance of demons the apostles those are the people who followed jesus the apostles believed firmly in the existence of demons matthew suggested the organization under satan matthew 12 26 and spoke of their final doom in 25 and 41 luke described their nature luke 4 33 through 6 and 18 the explosion from the human being, uh, let's see, and that's in 9 and 42, and their place of dwelling in 8, 27 to 33. John also told of their dwelling place, Revelation 19 and 11. Their activity, Revelation 16 and 14, and declare their existence, Revelation 9 and 20. Paul wrote to Timothy, Timothy, warning him of the doctrines of devils. And that's where we're at now, doctrines of devils. There are churches that believe that when you die, your soul dies in your body. Your soul remains in your body, and they call it soul sleep. That is a lie from the devil. A lot of people in hell today wish their souls were asleep. You going to hell if you don't know Jesus. That's the bottom line. I can't make it no simpler. People, I got told the other day, you're just an old person with old ideas. Well, I got to stick with those ideas. These are the things that God has taught me, so I got to stick with them. I'm not saying anybody going to hell unless you don't know Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, you're going to hell. Demons name themselves. Very often, demons name themselves. Now, a lot of preachers want to impress you by getting up and asking a person, what is your name? Well, Jesus did that, but we don't do that because that devil is a lying spirit. The Bible tells us that the devil was a father of all lies. So you can't believe what's coming out of a person. When you ask him, how many demons are in you? He said 120. He probably be the only one in there because they lying. You can't believe what the devil is saying. Don't talk to the devil. Just cast him out. Don't waste your time talking to him because that's what he wants. He wants the attention. And the more attention he gets, the more powerful he is. So don't talk to the devil. The Bible denotes several examples. One told me he was a serpent spirit. Another said loudly, I am the angel over the blood. The spirit in the demons possessed man, uh, Godera, called themselves legion. That's in Mark 5 and 9. Now, getting back to Mark 5 and 9, there was a same spirit in the gospel of Matthew. And it was two men there, but we see in Mark 5 and 9 there was only one. Well, what happened was the man that worship Jesus, he got delivered of demons. He was clothed and in his right mind when he got rid of the demon. So insanity is from Satan. 
demons are liars. We must realize, however, that demons are liars and may not be telling the truth about their name and number of strength. Evelyn, they vary in wickedness, and some can be more wicked than others. That, that is true. Uh, Oral Roberts used to say he could, that he knew the number and the name. Well, maybe he did, but you got to be leery of those types of questions about the demons. You don't talk, as I said, don't talk to them, just cast them out. And that's why we're not casting them out now because we got to impress people by talking to them and allowing them to talk back to us. I went in the church once and a woman knew my name and all that, and you know, okay, I'm saying, to, I started wondering, I said, Who, what is this? How did this woman, well, maybe she seen me on television. And then I found out she didn't see me on television. Then I knew she was a demon. And she tried to get me to come in her house and even entice me with food. And I just happened to be fasting. So you know you're hungry then. But I said, no, I can't go in your house. Well, I had prepared this for the other preachers, the church that you, I met you at. And you can have it because they didn't want it. I said, well, ma'am, I don't want it. I got, I got to go. She said, well, let me have a hug before you go. And when that woman hugged me, I knew it was a demon because I felt things and experienced things that I had never experienced before. Just from a hug, I'll put it there. Demons vary in power. They also vary in power, Mark 9, 29. And they seem to know the name of those who rebuke them and exercise them in Acts 19, 15. And evil spirits said, Jesus I know and Paul I know. But who are you? He asked the people that was trying to cast them out. Sons of one skeever that was trying to cast out demons. He said, well, who are you? But I know Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? And don't let the devil tell you that, okay? <coughs> De demons believe and tremble. Now, demons believe. That means they never seen God. Angels have seen God, but demons have never seen God. That's one of the difference between a demon and an angel. There's a big difference because demons are half angel and half human. The, the, the angels that had sex with women in Genesis chapter 6 are demons. When the flood came, it killed their outer body. But their inner bodies were still alive. And they didn't have to go to hell because they weren't man and they were angel. So they were allowed to stay here until something tragic happened. Like when Jesus was casting them out of that man in, in Mark chapter 5, he said, the demon said to him, don't send us, have you come here to torment us, torment us before our time? And if you're going to cast us out, don't cast us back in Titorus. That is the Greek term of the part of hell that demons are in. Excuse me, angels are in. That is that area. So he was saying, don't send us there because they don't want to go there because it's a continuation of falling. You're always falling. When you're in the core of the earth, you see it's a circle there, and it's very, very hot. <clears throat> and the angels that sin with women, they are there. The Bible tells us in Timothy that God sent them there because they sin against God. God said, do not mixture, no mixture. We shouldn't mix Men who having sex with animals and et cetera, et cetera, they shouldn't be doing those things. So let's let's go on with this. Uh, let's let's look at some more stuff about what the Lord is doing. God is a good God. God is gracious. God is everlasting. He is the God of gods and King of kings, and on and on and on we can go with that. We need to recognize that action in our family generation could keep us in bondage to demons unless we are willing to look at the other relationship and repudiate anything in them that hinders our walk with Jesus. This is what we have to do because demons get attached to your family and they've been following your family ever since we've been in Africa and so on and so forth. They've been here that long and that's what they do they get with your family and they stay in that family tree yeah your daddy had diabetes guess what you have diabetes too your grandma had high blood pressure guess what you're going to have high blood pressure too i said they could not enter your spirit i didn't say they couldn't enter your mind and they can enter your body i shouldn't say yeah mind because the mind is in the soul but he can also enter your body 
and people get sick and there's no reason for them to be sick, but they're sick. That is a demon, and that thing has to be cast out. Otherwise, that person would remain sick and probably die from that sickness. In Romans 1 and 21, let not, let not be like those who knew God but became brutal in their speculations and their foolish hearts were darkened. The Lord says that his people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And that's in Hosea 4 and 6. Now, I've got two minutes left. I want to talk to you about receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because if you don't receive Jesus, <laughs> and I don't take enough time to explain this to you, but you should receive Jesus to keep from going to hell. See, there's nothing God can, God don't send anybody to hell. That's the first thing I want you to know. God don't send anybody to hell. But if you don't accept Jesus, he don't have a choice. See, God can't grab you and say, don't do this, don't do that. He can't do it because he gave you a will to do what you want to do. So when you do what you want to do and it's against God's word, guess what? You got to pay the consequences. <laughs> you got to pay for what you have enacted on God because when you sin you are fighting against God you're coming against God and when you kill and murder and destroy see what's on our street now that is Satan that is Satan when you kill some I remember one time I ran over a squirrel do you know that hurt me so bad when I heard the little squirrels crumbling under the tires of my car that hurt me can you imagine taking somebody who was created in the image and likeness of God to take a life from that person? That's ugly. You, it's the same as killing God. When you kill a brother on the street, and when I say brother, I mean mankind, because there ain't but one race of people, and that's the human race. We have different colors and shades, but there's not but one race of mankind. So don't get it twisted and start coming against one another because all of us are one race, the human race, and some of us are sinners more than others, and that's because of demons once again. And then you get caught up in sin. Sin can take you there because, see, that's the reason Jesus went to hell to pay for your sins. Jesus went to hell because you were supposed to go there, but he went there for you, so you don't have to go now. Because he went there for you and took your place and took your punishment in hell. The three days and three nights that Jesus uh, was in the heart of the earth, not the grave because he was buried in a tomb, but his spirit went into hell. Matter of fact, Jesus went into Taurus because he wanted to talk to the devils that was there, the angels, excuse me, and let them know that he made it anyway because that's the reason they crossbreeded with men and women so that they could stop Jesus from coming. God bless you and God keep you till we meet each other again. Shalom.